Well, this here is the first mat I made, I think, two and a half years ago, actually. And it's held up really well. Here's the second mat that I've made. And I'm actually going to show you how I go about making this mat right here. I am going to redo this mat because I did it, I started it like months ago and then I lost my verve and I put it down for a bit and then of course my husband kept stepping on it and the vacuum kept messing up and scrunching it all together. So I'm going to take out the inside. I think that this is too tight this row because my little swirlies are not fitting inside this area very well. They keep bunching up on top of each other so I think the best thing for me to do is just take out one row because that will make a big difference I think in how much space there is for all the swirlies. When I did the swirlies I did well I think I counted how much how many of the the rows I made but Mostly it was done on size. Working with this size, although, it is very, very dusty. And it's going to be like that until I put the um, anti-slip grips on the back side of it. So I vacuum, I vacuum, I sweep, I vacuum. And <laughs> it's a never-ending saga because it, ooh, it just drops out while I'm cutting and sewing. And it's hot. Do not use the scissors like this, kids. Do not. So I cut all these off of the inside rim just now before I did that. Huh. I like giving myself extra work, don't I? So you guys know you got that's gotta move it because something is just not right. I don't know. I think I remembered what I did wrong when I was making this, but now hmm, huh, I've forgotten. It's like it's, the issue is like right in here. And it could be that all I did was just pull the um thread too tight when I put it through. So what I don't want to have to do is to take out all of these. Do them again. I mean, who wants to do that? Not I, it's just a little rabbit. So I'm just trying to see what I can fix before I continue cutting and pulling out and redoing, which I often do when I'm doing things and I'm not too happy with how they're turning out. I just bite the bullet and I start again, I erase it and do it again. I mean, that's how you get better. Yep, the issue. And it's, it seems to be right here. These are two different shades of the sisal. So something must have happened when, when I finished up this row here and started with this darker row. But I just, for the life of me, can't figure out what I did wrong there. And I have to be careful because if I don't, it's going to be very, very crooked. Okay. Do I check out the outside four rows and what I'm doing now is sewing the edge of the round thingy to this and I have to make sure it is quite loose because if it's too tight it will be a disaster. Tie this one off. Pull it through there. And then pull it, loop, pull it through here. Twisty, 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 twisty. Put it through the hole again and pull to make my little knot. Tie it off. So that's there. Take my trusty scissors and snip. So then I'm going to move on to another part, but before I do that, I have to re knot this. Because if I don't, I have to, uh, no, maybe that's too close to here. All it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, depends on the mood I'm in, and then pull it, slide it through, keep holding it, and the knot will be at the bottom. Again, very loosely. 
when I do the um the outside ones then I start to use my longer upholstery needles but for this close up work I just use the regular needle. It's a regular needle but it's a bigger regular needle. You don't need one of those thin ones. Lord have mercy you'll be here all day. Just go around again. Careful not to pull it too tight. If you pull it too tight you're gonna be in trouble. And I just need it to be attached and somewhat secure. I don't need it too tight because then it's going to pull the sheep. Alright, so I've tacked all of these so everything is attached with some thread and a little bit of glue. I felt it would need it, but. Anyway, so I'm going back to filling in around and around and around you go. So I've got like three new ones because you can kind of see a color just difference. Oh, right, there's a three I've added. So all I do, I put the rope there, get a needle. I'm sure hope you can see this. Not a needle, a pin. Mm -hmm. just, so I've got three, one, two, three. This is the fourth row. I haven't attached anything. I've just gone around four times. I just tack it right there. with this much left of the sisal rope of the 50 feet. I'm going to stop right there with these five rows. And I'm going to get up my friend here. I have these come in a set of three. These upholstery needles. So do I, I want to try using the shortest one. I get too greedy and I end up pricking myself. Take this little needle off. I need to put you somewhere safe. And this is the extra strong thread. It says extra strong. It's upholstery thread. So that's how you know it's much stronger than the regular thread. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Whatever you have, you use that. Because at the end, Remember, I'm going to glue some um, anti-slip mats to the bottom of this anyway. You now the hot glue works with that because it's got like a carpeted surface. There we go. Nice generous amount. The thing I like about the upholstery needles, I don't know where this where you keep the glue and the scissors and the knives and stuff, is that they're nice and easy to thread with the big holes because I struggle. I need a threader. Just because you don't have an upholstery needle doesn't mean you can't do it. So if you want, you can use a regular needle. So you want to stay kind of like towards the surface, which is the undersurface or the middle. You don't want to go too deep because then you're on the correct side. You didn't want that. I use my fingernails as a thimble. Maybe I should invest in a thimble. <laughs> I don't even write. That's a perfect hole. Oh my dear. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to try to get it out. Dang, that could have been my finger. So. Oh. Okay. 
So this one, 50, 50 feet of twisted sisal rope. Got me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven revolutions, seven rows. So when I was coming to the end, when you come to the end of these little bundles, they get very screwy and curly and whirly. So I have to put some more pins to hold the end. If not, it just goes crazy like a corkscrew. So that's where that one finished. You can see the little cheapy thing holding the end. So this is my open up another 50 feet. And here this cloth. Oh. Yeah, okay, here they're $9.99. So that's why I would get ticked off if someone oh, I could pay thirty dollars for that. So this is one, two, three, four. Yeah, this that's funny. This is already past forty dollars. Okay. So, there we go. You're off. Smoky, smoky. See how it, like sometimes it, oh, you know what? Okay, listen to this. When you're using these, I made a boo-boo. When you take off the plastic, you have a choice of where to start, which one to grab. I didn't look just now because I was talking at the same time. Don't grab the end that's in the middle because of this tight circumference here, it makes it like a curly cute french fry. You want to choose the one that's on the outside. It's less curly, people. You know, I can fix it. Do I want to? You know what? That's going to get on my nerves. So you know what I'm going to do? Do this. Oh, Lord. Please don't break. Please don't break. Please don't break. Well, one day I had like seven pairs of scissors down here. Today, I have none. Except that hair cutting one. I have no idea where they've gone. So, I mean, no one's come down here and taken them. I've done it myself. So I'm, I cut that piece because I am not going to be fighting with that curly, curly cute thing. So I'm going to take this off this end. A little bit of glue will do for you. Put you there. I'm going to attach you guys because you're going to work together better this way. Instead of driving myself crazy. I know I glued that to the floor just now, but that's what happens when you've got these white nasty tiles. This is not a rental home, this is my home, and it's just so <laughs> one of those things that should be changed, but it falls down the priority list, especially when you've got two boys that are in college at the same time. Never mind you've been preparing for it since they were born, and it's still a struggle. Whatever. Just keep learning to do without. Trying to make a dollar out of 50 cents. She missed, she missed, she missed like this. Okay. So I have two more black ones. I remember where I put the other pins. <gasps> How could I have forgotten this? When we were on lockdown, lockdown, which is like, ay, 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 curfew city. May? Early May. I have finished doing some of my lessons or whatever. Oh, I know. I, yeah, oh yeah. And I was making some masks and I know. I made, let me see if I can find that. Let me see. Oh, my back. Where did I 
everything out. Oh, everything. Oh, here it is. I found it. I found it. Some leftover. This is from a shower curtain. This brown material. I used to love that shower curtain. This is for my jeans. I just cut them up. See, you see? And I had some Velcro. I just hot glued there. And it goes on your wrist like this. A little cushion mushy mush mushroom. So when I made it, I actually found. So this is scratchy Velcro here. And this is, what is this from? I, I don't know where I got this piece. I took it off of something and I cut it. I don't know. Whatever. So my little bracelet, I just stick it right there. Burp. Here you go. So I made a mushroom for my pins. So that's where some of the pins are. And I just saw some more. Yeah, in the container. I've got a crap load. And they're all stuck together because I always put a magnet. I cheese on bread. Why do I? <laughs> okay. I always drop a couple of magnets in here. I have to hold it very gingerly so that my pins will stick together so they don't go flying all over the place. I even have one, the earlier one that I was using. I just put some magnets in that too. Just one little flat one. This one has two because I had more of them in there like that. So I don't have any time to be picking up pins that fall over the floor. I just So back to my friend here. I mean, shoot. <laughs> I finished attaching the last um, skein of the sisal. So what I'm doing now is hand painting the mat using tones of gold. And this is, it's kind of metallic gold. Some matte. Add acrylic paint mixed with a little bit of the gray that I already had, blue gray, but I had to put some more black with it to cut out some of the blue tones. So I have some dark gray, some dark gray paint. Here's the blue gray paint, which is black. The gold is in this tray. I need to put some more in there. And this is water because I thin it down when I do it. And that's just on that tray to stop it from making a huge mess. So are you good? So now I'm gonna go over here. And it doesn't have to be done. I'm not gonna like use this tiny little brush for the whole thing. So I do have this guy over here. To my feet. So I'm just swiping it with the black with water. Got a little bit of gray in it as well. After I'm finished hand painting it, I will leave it to dry and then I will start putting on the bottom part. Now, the bottom is just to stop it from slipping. And it also helps to keep it all together. I purchased these. Take this back out. These carpet tiles. If you've ever been in Be Smart, you've seen in the library corner. I have these carpet tiles. Um, they came from somewhere in Europe. I can't remember which country, but um, we have multiple colors. I've not really replaced them over the years because. I realized these carpet tiles, they're excellent for your home or playroom, but I think they've been now for five years now at Be Smart. And they, the light colors especially, they have so much wear and tear. I remember coming back to Be Smart once after we ran two months of summer camp 
and they were almost destroyed because there's so many feet all over them. So when they get like this, looking raggedy, I have Miss Tony take them up. We vacuum them all up and clean them. And this bottom here is what I'm going to attach to the underside. So let's say this was the bottom and I was doing this right here. So I, I would probably go this way first. And I would use a marker. And let's say I would make this thinner here so that there's a strip right in there to help keep that together. And then probably put that on there like this. And then, all right. So I've done one already. Cut out the piece from the puzzle, and I've just attached it with hot glue here. Here. So this one right here hasn't been done. So when I do the bottom, this is where you have to be careful, because if you don't, if you let this end right here, when people step on the mat, that will always curl down, and then it will force it apart, and your mat's going to fall apart. So what you should do is make sure that your very bottom is touching the outside ring or circle like that and I just used some chalk that I just had in my hand of course it's just decided it wanted to run away and I just cut across here and I trimmed the bottoms because it needs to be a little bit rounded my scissors didn't run away so I'm gonna cut this line here that get some of the glue hot glue turn it over here 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 and I only have like four of these big thick glue things left left I'm not happy about that but quickly place it here because if you don't it's gonna dry before you put it on and you're gonna waste the glue then you're gonna be mad In here, this is a little bit more rounded than that. I can just make this circle a little bit rounded. There we go. Snip, snip. Good. I'm going to have lots of little scraps left over, like these things here, so if I wanted to. I can always just add them wherever, cut little pieces off. All in here has to be filled in as well with the mats. I'm going to put this guy up here for now. And of course, when you're cutting these, it's not the cleanest of jobs. You don't use, have to use hot glue. You can also use um, what's that called? liquid nails. That works. For the purpose of... That's all I do there. And any scraps, I always keep the scraps because I still have to have enough to fill in here because if I don't, it's going to be uneven because this gives it a little ledge. Then I next have to do all of this, and this, 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 these, these, and the middle. Then I'm done.
finish my gold and black sisal rug. I am very happy with how it's turned out. This is the underside. <clears throat> oh, gonna, oh, there we go. So I've cut out all the pieces and attached them. So this is gives it a raised surface, and it's all this is made with recycled materials. I'm very happy, and then I also because some of the, these carpet tiles were red. I just put a border on the inside here. So when it's turned over, you don't see whew, any red. So I might just go in and use some more paint to um, darken this. Just so it blends a little bit better. But I am very pleased with my efforts on that. I'm chuffed.